there's no such thing as a reach med school. There's no such thing as a safety med school. As you noticed, you got zero interviews trying to mix and match. Application Renovation Season 4, Episode 18. How are you today? I'm doing well, Dr. Gray. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm excited to chat with you and hopefully review some things about your prior application that maybe fell a little bit flat or uh, maybe there's some room for improvement to make your next application cycle a little bit more successful or a lot bit, a lot bit more successful. Uh, before we jump in, though, um, give us the nuts and bolts. Is this your first application cycle? How many interviews? Give us all of those details. Yeah, so this is my first application cycle. Um, I had no interviews. I applied to 20 or 21 schools. No interviews? No interviews. Okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> that was no, my reaction to it. Yeah. <laughs> no interviews. Okay. Um, so no interviews. Uh, what do you think happened? Um, so I think I, or no, I know I suffered from a lack of clinical exposure. Um, and my thought was I kind of rack up some more hours during the school year and then you know, update school with that. Um, but as I found out the hard way, that's not a great way to go about that. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. a lot of students rely on updating schools. I know I'm lacking this now, but I'm going to update you. I know my GPA is not great, but I'm going to update you. And it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that well. Um, okay. Why a lack of clinical experience? So I got started on the pre-med track. Um, beginning of my junior year and that was about four or five months before COVID hit um and that made getting clinical exposure pretty much <laughs> impossible um until until lately uh talk about so a couple of months before COVID hit it sounds like what what were you studying before then uh so i'm a computer science major and that was my focus mm. before before pre-med Okay. How did you switch that quickly from computer science to pre-med and still not get the experiences? Because there's still a lot of classes you had to take, no? Uh, yeah. So I had to take all my comp sci classes on top of the pre-med stuff. Um, and so having you know those big course load didn't help mm -hmm. um, with getting experiences very much. But um, you know, after COVID, I was not, not able to find the experiences I needed. So lack of experience... Uh, COVID obviously for everyone was a, a big factor for that. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to see now that we're starting to get some application renovation students affected by COVID, what that looked like, what the lack of experience potentially resulted in. Um, all right. So you ready to dive into, actually, before we dive in, uh, a question I've been asking these last few episodes when you were putting together your application, what was your goal with kind of the theme or the format or the story that you were trying to put together for your application? Um, so I wouldn't say I had much of a theme in mind when I was doing this, but I, I knew the computer science aspect was something kind of unique. And so I tried to, I guess, emphasize that or spin that uh, in a way that would make me stand out. So, uh, I, I, I'm laughing a little bit as I'm uh, chewing on a, a cough drop um, because uh, for people who have watched this before, the uh, the trying to stand out almost never works. So we'll, we'll see how this works for you. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into your application and take a look and see what's going on here. So the first thing I want to highlight is you applied very late uh, in August. Yeah. Uh, what happened there? So I took my uh, my MCAT pretty late, and I had mono at the time, um, and so you know I was not at full uh, was not one hundred percent coming off of that, um, and I also really underestimated how difficult it would be to write the personal statement in the most meaningful activities. <laughs> I kind of thought, oh, you know, I'll crank this out in a week or two, have it done. Um, yeah, and it got to be August, and I was like, oh man, I'm nowhere <laughs> near where I, where I want to be. Okay. Uh, when you finally submitted, do you think you were just like, I need to apply, and so I'm just going to submit what I have? Yeah, I, I think that's that's what was going through my head. 
Um, in hindsight, obviously, I wish I waited a year. Um, okay. But yeah, that's that's what I did. Okay. All right. All right. So late application. Um, so so step one, not a not a great start. Um, not disadvantaged. Uh, SES did disadvantaged. No. Again, that just comes from education occupation of parents, not first generation. Um, no red flags, which we like to see, uh, which is great. And then we get to grades, and we see, okay, we've got some A's to start, some more A's. Uh oh, C. That darn physics. Um, and so let's we we get down to the end, mostly great grades, and then we see, yep, three seven one science, three nine three all other, three eight five cumulative, great great GPA, not going to be an issue. Uh, and then we get to uh, G, uh, MCAT score and five fourteen, so great MCAT score, no issues stat wise. Would you agree? Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, I mean, your GPA may be a little bit because it's South Carolina. It's not the best of the, the colleges for the SEC, but I mean, it'll right. do. It'll do. Um, the, uh, the activities. We get to activities, and we start off with being a tutor. And I, I would say just kind of a broad overview. Uh, I wrote good on a lot of your activities because your activity descriptions – really helped me understand who you were. They weren't overly sales pitchy. I think they did a decent job of, of really highlighting the experiences that you had. So you have a tutor experience here. You mark it as a most meaningful. It was uh, over a year long, 200 hours, and you gave gave this uh, good good story here, good description. So good job with that. We have a research lab, so you're a lab assistant uh, working again for about a year and mm -hmm. another good story here talking about what you're doing and, and uh, what this experience was like for you. So no, again, no, no huge issues. We have personal touch volunteer. You mark this as medical clinical. It's for a couple months for 40 hours. And again, this is potentially one of those ones that's impacted by COVID, which is why it ends right at March, 2020. And I wrote here, I don't know what personal touch volunteers are. I don't know what this is. So a lot of times I talk about the activity description, right? If you're an EMT, if you're a scribe, if you're a medical assistant, all these kind of normal things, like you don't really need to describe what you're doing because most people are going to know what the heck it is. Personal touch volunteer. Your description talks about the best part of volunteering here was getting to know patients. Uh, one woman, Joyce, was in her 70s despite having one of her blah, 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 blah. So you keep going. And I just, I don't know who you are in this situation. I don't know what this is. So probably could have benefited from a sentence of just setting the scene almost of here's what personal touch volunteers are, what we do, etc. Um, so that was the first thing. And then you can see here, I wrote on the side, why was this most meaningful? So the, the important thing for most meaningful activities that I've been trying to focus students on lately is really making sure that you are answering the question, why is this most meaningful to me? And I didn't see that here. Um, I see the takeaway that you have of this, like, I know, like, I learned that or it taught me. Um, the act of treating patients had always seemed to be the most important of medicine. So it seems like it's missing a word there. Most important yeah, it's definitely missing part, a word there. part of medicine. Uh, I didn't catch that the first time around. But my time here yeah. showed me that adapting to the unique needs of each patient is a equally vital part of patient care. Great. Why is that important? I'm not sure. Okay, so we have to be careful with that. Um, that that takeaway. So it's students really like to highlight this, like, I know what's important to be a doctor, so I'm ready to be one. Uh, we have shadowing, which is great, from 2019 and 2020. Um, shadowing these joint implant surgeons. Uh, you have here, I learned that providing good patient care is just as much uh, about having technical knowledge and skill as it is about developing mutual respect, blah, blah, blah. So again, very similar. You're like, hey, I understand medicine. Hey, I understand medicine. What it's like to be a good doctor. I just want to know who you are. 
not what you think medicine is all about. Right. A lot of times these are doctors reading these like they don't need you to tell them what being a doctor is like. They are one. So that that focus is just the wrong focus there. Um, we get to poolside employee at the country club. And this is a, a great, um, uh, a good, good little story here. I love that many of the, the pilot pizzas were, were not made more than once. Like, oh, that's not good. Don't do that one again. Um, so it's a good little story, right? Memorable for me. Um, and then we get to software intern, software engineering intern, 400 hours. And you use this experience as kind of the, I knew this experience is what changed my direction. And so I'm not sure that that's what the point of this story is, right? I want to know about the experience, not how the experience was bad. It was basically <laughs> how you framed it. Um, and so you said, I, I found myself wanting to do something that allowed me to interact with other people and have an impact on their lives. Okay. Um, and then this experience is what led me to start looking for a career outside of computer science. Got it. And we have Carolina Movement uh, and interest in gymnastics since you were a child and what you're doing there. So another good experience that's very interesting and and, and uh, would make me want to ask some questions as, as we're going through. But then I see, I, I circled here, right? Only There's only seven activities. I'm assuming you did more while you were in school. Yeah, I, um, I did do a lot more until I uh, took on the pre-med kind of stuff. Um, so this was, this was pretty much everything I, I was involved in outside of class. So Carolina Movement, not a ton of hours. Uh, it was also probably more than that. Um, but I was paranoid about overestimating and having them, you know, call <laughs> okay. someone taking the acceptance back. Yeah. Okay. So let's say it's 300 hours, still not a ton of hours over the course of many yeah. years. Um, you started, let's look at your timeline here. Freshman year is 2017. So you're doing that during school. Um, 2018, you're an intern. Is this sophomore, junior year? Oh, uh, that was the summer after my freshman year. Summer after freshman year. This is sophomore year? Summer after sophomore year? Yeah, summer after sophomore year. Okay. So during the school years, you're not doing anything? No activities? No volunteering? No nothing? No. Nah. Okay. Um, I think that's where I suffered too a little bit, is not having... Um, a depth of experience that I think other applicants had. Yeah. D did you literally do nothing? Like most students are doing something. You're just <laughs> in school, hanging out? Um, yeah, hanging out with friends, uh, that kind of thing, but nothing, you know. I had a life outside class, but no, you know, formal organizations or okay. clubs or anything like that. So you're living the college life? Living the college life. <laughs> Got it. Got it. All right. Um, okay, so potentially lacking a little bit there because only seven activities, so it looks like something's missing. Um, and then, a as you highlighted, the clinical experience part is just these 40 hours um, mm -hmm. where you are some sort of volunteer. What is this personal touch volunteer? Explain that to me. Yeah, so that's kind of how um, the hospital brands their hospital volunteers. Um, so I go in and talk with patients, um, you know, bring them food, uh, refill their water cups. I also help nurses like turn over beds, um, and get like dirty sheets and clothing, uh, to the washroom. Okay. That, that type of thing. Yeah. So the, the bulk of the interaction is just bringing them food and refilling water. Uh, that's like, I, I guess that's the, you know, responsibility to be a list, but you also need to go in and talk with patients. And a big part of that is sitting and keeping them company. Okay. All there. right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so you're doing those things. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not just going in there and talking gloves. Okay. So yeah. So just making that more clear about it's it's really just hospital volunteer, like inpatient mm -hmm. volunteer, just something general instead of because the the brand of personal touch volunteer means nothing to me. Okay. Yeah, um, that makes sense. All right. And then so just a, a little bit of that clinical experience. Um, 
since then, have you been getting any more clinical experience? Uh, yeah, I have. I've got about 150 hours at a free clinic since, uh, since then. Okay. Doing what? Um, checking patients in, taking vitals, uh, that type of thing. History. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Taking vitals, history stuff. So you're acting as kind of like a, a medical assistant. Uh, yeah, that, that's about right. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. And you're doing that consistently or was that kind of a one-time thing? No, no, I'm doing that, uh, twice a week. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. All right. So that's some good experience that you can lean on. Uh, any recent shadowing? Cause your shadowing was from 2020. I don't really have any recent shadowing, but at the clinic, I have a lot of time to go and shadow the doctors. Okay. Or light on patients or at the end of the, um, end of the day, I get to go in and see some of that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would count that as shadowing. So you could split okay. potentially like if you're at the clinic for 10 hours, let's say just <clears> even <throat> numbers, uh, and nine hours are you working as a medical assistant volunteer and one hour is I'm just hanging out watching and shadowing. You, you could potentially split that up. Um, you think not having a dedicated shadowing experience that's more recent is going to hurt me? Uh, I, I think recency and consistency for shadowing and clinical experience are very important things. Okay. And so if, if you're doing that at the clinic now, then I think that's fine. Gotcha. All right. So let's get to the personal statement. So from an activity standpoint, I, I agree with your kind of initial assessment, lack of experience, definitely a huge issue that typically translates into not being able to tell the story about why you want to be a doctor because I don't have the experiences to support that decision. And then we're going to jump into, I think, uh, where there's uh, what you were talking about earlier from your computer science background, the, ooh, this is unique, so I'm going to focus on it aspect, where I think maybe we went a little wrong okay. in my mind. Okay? Yep. So we get to uh, personal statement here, personal comments, they call it. I don't like how they call it that. It's the personal statement. Let's let's rename it. Um, and we have this very interesting opening and the the story that you told here about tra trying to shake a hand to someone who's scrubbed in already like yeah let's let's not do that we don't shake hands uh in the or um although i didn't have any prior knowledge of medicine it appealed to me because it placed an emphasis on human interaction and allowed for a meaningful impact on the lives of others two things i felt were missing from my current career path as a computer scientist and so I wrote here, big stretch. You're basically like, um, I found myself wanting to do something that involved interacting with people and impacting their lives. Therefore, I'm going to be a doctor. That's, that's a big leap that is missing something there. You're missing a big part of your story that, that you're not telling here. So let's, let's try to focus on that story because... We didn't get there yet. So you and me, let's have a little heart to heart. <laughs> when did you first think about healthcare? Not as like, ooh, I want something where I can work with other people and impact their lives. So my, uh, my grandfather was an orthopedic surgeon and he did a bunch of hip and knee replacements. Um, and after he passed away at his calling hours, I got a chance to meet a ton of people who, who were, you know, talking about, oh, your grandfather changed my life. Um, but I also heard from people who had never even met him, but, oh, you changed my mom's life. And once you could walk mm. comfortable without pain, you know, our relationship was a lot stronger. Um, and so that kind of keyed me into medicine, I would say. How old were you when your grandfather passed? Uh 19 or 20 this was two two or three years ago okay so you were you yeah. were older what did your grandfather practice when you were alive uh or did did was he retired by then no so he he stopped practicing when i was pretty young okay i never had a chance to actually see him see him practice okay so you never saw him practice but you knew grandpa was a doctor and made an impact on people mm -hmm. and then you got to hear those stories um after he passed Right. Uh, a little bit more. Okay. Awesome. So there's healthcare in your circles. Um, you're talking to people who have been impacted by a family member. 
Um, what about you personally, personal healthcare stuff, parents, what do they do? Um, what did the, what does the inner circle look like? There's nothing really in my immediate family. I'd say, um, my parents are attorneys okay. and my tonsils, I would have four. <laughs> That's the only real yeah. okay. medical thing I've had. Yeah. Okay. So you're 19 or 20 you're, which is right around the time you, you have this kind of crisis of faith mm-hmm. where you're on the, your computer science path. Do you think it was literally your grandfather passing and, and hearing these stories, interacting with people that was like, well, that that's awesome that grandpa had that impact. I'm just sitting behind a desk typing on a keyboard. I, so I had that crisis of faith um, about six months before he passed. And, but it was his passing and hearing these people talk that made me make the loop medicine from computer science, if that makes sense. Okay. It makes, it makes a lot more sense than uh, what you have written here. So yeah, that, I, can, I can see that now. Yeah, so that's the kind yeah. of stuff where uh, when we leave out some pieces that help connect the right. dots, you're, this goes from a big stretch to a very logical, like, oh, I can see that, right? When you have that personal, your truth <clears throat> is you're in this very emotional state. Your grandfather's passing out. Obviously, you don't know how close you were with your grandfather. But being there, seeing these patients talk about the impact your grandfather had on them, you already being in a situation where you're like, I'm not loving what I'm doing. Wow, grandpa grandpa did that. That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to go check that out. And then it makes makes sense sense. now. It it makes sense even more uh, why you're shadowing these people. Right. These, these probably these people probably worked with grandpa, right? Uh, um yeah. so so you had you had a little bit of in there. So makes much more sense uh, okay. about what's going on here now. Okay. So this is where I get to um changing changing the narrative of the, of the application from trying to force these narratives and being fancy and like, just tell the truth. And then I would be like much clearer about everything that's going on. All right. And then here's where we get to um, where I think the biggest struggle is again, because you lacked a lot of experience. uh, We saw this last uh, application renovation video where the student tried to make this connection of, Oh, being a doctor is teaching and, uh, service. And so I'm going to show you how I have those things. Your draw is, well, I really have a lot of experience around computer science. And so I'm going to draw as many parallels as I can, because I I really don't have much else to lean on. And oh, by the way, I think your words, it's going to be unique, because there aren't a lot of computer science people going into medicine, is your assumption, right? And so the angle that you're taking is, I'm going to talk a lot about this the problem solving logical reasoning i'm thinking like a programmer right and and so mm-hmm. that's the angle that you take because you think it's going to help you stand out and really at the end of the day what it is is just uh, you assuming that basically all of the skills that you've taken from the cs world are going to translate into being a doctor and so hey might as well be a doctor got it yeah that's that's not how i wanted to come across but i think reading it again you know i've got ever since that it makes sense how it, how it comes across that way. Yeah. Ideally, what you're doing in the personal statement is why do you want to be a doctor? Not that you think like a programmer, therefore you're going to be a great doctor. You have this logical, critical thinking skills, all this fun stuff. Like my brain thinks like a programmer. I, I'm a self-taught programmer. I love computer science. And I think it's a huge skill to have. I, I want everyone to think like a programmer because it's it's just amazing thought processes. Um but that doesn't mean you should write about it. It doesn't mean that I'm a doctor because I, I have, I think, like a programmer too, right? Um, and then this was very interesting. This, this part here that I have highlighted, um, although I wasn't sold yet on medicine, I knew that I wanted to do something that was similarly impactful. And so you were talking about um, this story of your grandfather Dozens of patients thank the surgeon for improving their quality of life. Is this your grandfather, the surgeon? We had a uh, we had patients come in who sometimes had family members with them, and so I heard very similar things uh, while shadowing that I did. My grandfather was calling out. So this was while you were a shadow. While you were shadowing. This is while I was a shadow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, 
Uh, oh yeah, why well, shadowing there? There it is, hiding, hiding under my highlight there. Okay. Um, all right. So you're you're shadowing. You're saying I'm not sold on medicine yet, which I think is appropriate, right? That's why you're shadowing. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get some experience to go. Hey, maybe this is what I want to do. I knew that I wanted to do something that was similarly impactful, right? Impacting lives like these stories that I'm hearing. So that that makes sense. And then you continued to explore your interest in medicine by joining an immunology research lab, exposed you to that side of medicine. So you're kind of, again, comparing, contrasting, like, ooh, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just like being a computer programmer. Um, helped further reinforce my decision to go to medical school. I was a little confused because like, I say these say different things. And so maybe rereading, I'm like, okay, I guess this was stepwise. But I'm, I'm not sure I see the connection. Like, you're not sold on medicine yet, but now you are because it's reinforced your decision. So it seemed like it, again, it just, it seemed like it missed a step in there somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I did a good job of laying out how I wanted this to, to come across. Um, I think what I was going for is more of like a gradual, you know, build up of me deciding to apply to medical school. It wasn't like a switch flipped and I was still on it. Um, and that, uh, that lab experience was about a year and a half after the shadowing. Um, but I did do a good job of laying out that timetable. I don't think, so I think that's, that's where the confusion is coming from. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, all right. So in general, my, my general stance is that research doesn't belong in a personal statement. Again, my personal take Research shows that you are doing research. Medicine is so much more than just research. And and to me, there's no there's no connection to, I like research, therefore I want to be a doctor. So, uh, again, my general stance, do what you want, <laughs> but, but that's my stance. Um, and then tutoring here. So now you're like, okay, I know that being a good doctor involves teaching patients. And this is a very common uh, connection that students make to, to being a physician is being a physician, I have to teach patients on how to take care of themselves, what this disease means, proper medication. Oh, that's kind of like being a teacher or a tutor. So I'm going to throw in being a tutor to show that I can do that, um, to show that I can interact with people and have that impact and uh, show that um, I, being a doctor, and in, in you even here, use it here, right? Using my education to help others, to educate them as a, as a tutor, as a physician. So, and just a very common, consistent story that we tell over and over and over on application renovation is when you lack enough clinical experience, it's very hard to properly show why you want to be a doctor outside of the I'm going to show you my research because that's what I have I'm going to show you uh, the fact that I'm a teacher and being a doctor is like being a teacher and making these connections that are just super loosely related to being a doctor and then coming out and popping out of the cake going okay I'm ready to be a doctor now I showed you that I like research and I like to tutor people. Um, and, and medical schools just don't play that game, which is why I think at the end of the day, you just, even with great stats that you have, you, you don't end up getting any interviews, which is super disappointing. And hopefully is also, um, uh, I, I can't think of the right word, it, also encouraging because the stats are the hardest thing to fix. The experiences and how you reflect on those experiences, that's just that's just time to be able to get those experiences, which you're doing, and then just reframing how you're thinking about it all and just rewriting it and hopefully not cramming the writing into a two-week period or whatever it was right. that you did last time um, to be able to turn around and go, okay, now I know what I'm supposed to be doing here and how to do it better. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you who I truly am, help you understand my journey a little bit better. And oh, by the way, my stats are still pretty solid. 
So right, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. So we get we get to the end, and again, just um, your your focus here is basically I want to impact people. Medicine is how I want to do that. So here I am, and and I think there's uh, that is the core of the message. But we need to dig deeper into how you got there and what you've experienced to show that, and that's where the okay, clinical gotcha. experiences come from. Um, we look at schools. So we got private, 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 uh, private, 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 uh, MCW is private. I'm pretty sure. Uh, private, private, uh, Oakland, are they public? I can't, I don't remember, uh, Beaumont. Or brother. Uh, Ohio State public, uh, Penn State's private. It's a weird private one. Uh, private, private. Toledo's public. Toledo public, I think. Um, Tufts private. Cincinnati public. North Carolina public. Pittsburgh private. Uh, UW, Wisconsin UW uh, public. And so, pretty good job. Like. Mostly private schools, out-of-state schools. So you did a great job understanding that. When you were building your school list, did you know that kind of difference of public and private? Uh, no, I got, I think, lucky with the <laughs> distribution here. Um, I mostly went by MSAR stats, stats and chose a couple reaches and, and went from there. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I yeah. would highly recommend, if you haven't already, Pre-Med Years Episode 437 is okay. a podcast episode I did on how to build a school list. And my general recommendation is you don't apply based on stats. You apply based on doing lots of research into the individual schools, find out where your passions lie, what you're interested in, and find the schools that match that. Even if their median, remember MSAR gives median data, not, not mean, not average, median data, if their median MCAT is 518 and you're at a 514, that doesn't mean you don't apply. If their median yeah. uh, science GPA is 3.9 and you're sitting at 3.7 or 3.8, that doesn't mean you don't apply. The stats, like in, in my world, what I talk about, there's no such thing as a reach med school. There's no such thing as a safety med school. As you noticed, you got zero interviews trying to mix and match, right? Mm -hmm. Find schools that you want to apply to based on mission fit based on their values, based on your values, based on you as a person, based on how they're trying to impact the world. You may find interest in a school like Carl, Illinois uh, College of Medicine because they're an engineering-based medical school and you're sitting here with your computer science background and that may be an amazing fit for you because it's a good fit, not from stats. Right? Notice how I didn't say, oh, you'd be interested in Carl, Illinois, because their median MCAT score is lower than your MCAT score, and you, you'll get in. Right? It's just, it's so much more than stats. And that's the easy way to do it, is just go to the MSAR, move the filters around, and, and try to find your school list. And it's much harder to do much deeper research and reflection. Uh, but that is the, in, in my mind, the right way to build a list that will hopefully not guarantee, but hopefully result in a much better application cycle. Only question I have is about the, the MCAT score. Um, where my like reading and it's like so are pretty high within the actual like science sections are um, not low, but you know, lower. Uh, do schools, is that any kind of like red flag or not? Not really. No, not a red flag okay. at all. Gotcha. That was one thing I guess I worried about a little bit because um, MSR lets you break down by like MCAT subsections also. Uh, but that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Just because yeah. the data's there doesn't mean it's useful. <laughs> <laughs> Words to live by. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that was the only question I had uh, beyond you know, the personal statement and the activities and all that. Okay. Yeah. So the, the biggest thing for you. Uh, assuming you've been getting those experiences, um, getting some recent shadowing, you mm -hmm. should probably be ready to, to turn around another application and and uh, make yourself much more successful this time around. Okay, so that's interesting because I was I was planning on waiting a year um, okay. 
to get more clinical experience and more you know, volunteering. Yeah. Um, but do you think, you know, this with an extra 150 or 200 hours of clinical experience is, I guess, enough to push me over the edge? Yeah, it's, it's not the number that I'm looking at. It's how, how recent, how consistent, and how well can you reflect on that experience? Okay. And, and with the changes with AMCAS, so uh, I, I don't know if you've opened up an application yet for this year. AMCAS has changed their activity box now. So when you go in and add an activity on their website uh, in, in the AMCAS application, they now have, instead of add a date range, add the hours, it is now, they have a section for completed hours and it won't let you put an end date past this month, right? Uh, when we say date for AMCAS, it's just month and year. Um, so they won't let you put an end date past this month. So for completed hours, it's whenever you started X number of months or years ago right. to, as we're recording this, May of 2022, how many hours have you done? And then there's a box right underneath it for anticipated hours. And so this is a nice way, it's a great change to show medical schools to break it up because students did some wacky things trying to show anticipated hours. Not everyone understood that you could anticipate out hours or estimate out hours previously. And so now there's two separate discrete boxes. And with your experience that you're doing now, you'll be able to show uh, as of today, I have about 150 hours of being this kind of like pseudo MA uh, or an MA sorry, is what you're doing. So I have 150 hours of being an MA between whenever that started and now. And oh, by the way, I'm also going to continue doing that. So I'm going to put that in my anticipated hours moving forward to when I start medical school because that's what I've been doing and I enjoy doing that. And so medical schools will see great, you're doing it, and you're going to continue doing it. So Gotcha. So that doesn't really fall under the umbrella of like updating schools. No, Wait. yeah, that that's okay. not yeah, that's not updating schools. Uh that's that's still a whole separate uh game that, that students play. Uh I think that's everything I had for you, just in terms of questions. Awesome. Well, good luck. Fingers crossed and uh keep keep us posted. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you again for meeting with me.